Do not fear, O Yaakov, my servant, and Yeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I pour water on the thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I pour my spirit on your seed and my blessing on your offspring. And they shall spring up among the, the grass like willows by streams of water. Okay, now this doesn't say exactly what Yeshua quoted yet. Um, there are verses that will. We're just kind of building a, an understanding of how Yahweh uses this idea. Now bear in mind, first of all, he never mentions anybody else being chosen but Israel. Israel's the chosen. Okay, they didn't blow it and now the church is the chosen or some other way that people want to make it up. It's always been about Israel. It's about you figuring out how to be a part of Israel. That's the whole Romans 11 grafting in thing, okay? You're grafting into the commonwealth of Israel. All right, now. But he's talking about, he said, look, I pour water on the thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I pour my spirit on your seed and my blessing on your offspring. This is prophetically about the end times of the bringing back together and the regathering. Okay? If you don't agree with me, that's okay. That's my opinion. This is talking about those future end times. He's talking to them now. He says, look, don't worry about the fact that you're suffering and all these problems are happening right now. There will be a time when your seed, your descendants, will have this living water. He says, I'm going to pour my spirit on your seed. This water poured out on the thirsty. I'm going to pour my spirit on your seed because the spirit is going to feed them. They're so starving and they're thirsty and they're parched. It's the words of Yeshua. It's the words of Yahweh. Continuing, let's hold on to that thought in Jeremiah 2. We'll go to Jeremiah chapter 2 and in verse 13. I better hurry up. Jeremiah 2 and verse 13. For my people have done two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew out for themselves cisterns, crack cisterns who do not hold water. So now we're seeing again Yahweh referring to himself as the fountain of living waters, the source of the living waters. Isn't that what Yeshua said? Yeshua said exactly the same thing, which goes back to my do you know the Father and the Son teaching, which proves, in my opinion, that Yeshua is Yahweh of the Old Testament and that the Father actually hasn't been here, that you've been dealing with the Son all along. Okay? If that made no sense to you, please listen to the 11 parts of do you know the Father and the Son. It takes that long to make it clear, okay? And I had one person watching it sent me a Facebook message that said that his head was ready to explode. He didn't know what he, you know... It's hard because it goes against everything you've ever heard. But it's absolutely everything that the book tells you. Okay? Again, he says, he says you have forsake, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. Uh, stay in Jeremiah, go to 17, chapter 17, verse 13. Okay? 17, 13, we're just going to read three verses here. O oh, Yahweh, the expectation of Israel, all who forsake you are put to shame. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken Yahweh, the fountain of living waters. Okay, so here again, Yahweh's point out that he is the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Yahweh, so that I am healed. Save me, so that I am saved. For you are my praise. See, they say to me, where is the word of Yahweh? Let it come now. Again, that last verse connects up that the fountain of living waters has to do with the word of Yahweh. They're looking for the water, but they're looking for the word. This is just the way that you put things so they connect the dots. The water and the word are connected together over and over again. Just like the spirit, the water and the word are now connected together. Because Yeshua said, my words are spirit. And he's saying, out of me is going to flow rivers of living water. The word is going to go forth from Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And oh, it's connected. It's all the same thing. Let's not confuse this. Go to Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. And in verse 8. Zechariah 14. Now, first of all, let's understand the time frame from this. We understand the time of this in 14. Is, See, a day shall come, verse 1, for Yahweh, and your spoil shall be divided in your midst. And I'm going to gather all the Gentiles to battle against Jerusalem. This is when, in verse 4, and then that day, in that day, the day that first one was talking about, that's when the, uh, his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives and the, it's going to split in two. So we know what we're talking about. This has not happened yet. Now, in the context of that end times, listen now, in that day, 
It shall be that living waters flow from Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea and half of them towards the western sea, in the summer as to the well, as, as well as in the winter. And Yahweh, sovereign, shall be over all the earth. And in that day, there shall be one Yahweh and his name one. Now, do you see the connection now to this water flowing to something that hasn't happened yet? At least you're seeing a hint to it, right? But there's more. Hold on. But wait, there's more. Psalm, uh, Psalm 36, Tehillim 36. And in verse 8. Telem 36 and in verse 8. Okay. They are filled from the fatness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Hmm. For with you is the fountain of life. So again, connecting it back to Yahweh. And this is all going into... Um, a future understanding. This will lead into the future. Proverbs 14. We're just speedily shotgunning through here. Proverbs 14, and in verse 26 and 27. Mishle, Proverbs 14. In the fear of Yahweh is strong trust, and his children have a place of refuge. The fear of Yahweh is a fountain of life to turn away from the snares of death. So again, fountain of life, protecting you from death, and it's linked now to the fear of Yahweh. But we already taught that the waters and these things, this fountain is linked to spirit, is linked to the word, is linked to the Torah, right? Connect it all together. It's not all separate things. It's actually all talking about one thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10 and in verse 1. For I do not wish you to be ignorant, brothers. Well, I could say the same thing. That's what we're trying to do as teachers, right? We don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were immersed into Moshe in the cloud and the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed, and the rock was Mashiach. And the rock was Mashiach. However, with most of them, Elohim was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. And these became examples for us so that we should not lust after evil as those indeed lusted. So there is something in this whole thing that he's re relating us back there to waters, the sea, life, but those that chose evil and those that chose life. Chose life. What did Moses say? I lay before you life and death. Choose life. What's life? The word, the Torah, the instructions that teach you how to love your, your creator and how to love each other. <laughs>